The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for January 24th, 2018. So I'm teaching a series entitled The Benefits of Prayer and Fasting, and I spent 12 messages on fasting, and now I'm teaching on praying. So this is the power of prayer, part two. So I told you yesterday that God's original intent was for Adam to replicate heaven on the earth. God placed Adam over the earth with the goal of colonizing it. Now, that's hard for us in the U.S. because we we have presidents. We don't have a king. But think kingdom. Don't think, you know, democracy. Think kingdom, right? So the goal was for Adam to colonize the earth. Man was to rule the earth as a group of kings and as a kingdom of priests that will ultimately uh, be where, where God will ultimately be the king over the kings and he would be the Lord over the lords. And so to do this, these people down in the earth would then extend God's kingdom influence all over this planet. But then Adam failed. Adam didn't do that. Adam didn't extend God's kingdom influence all over the planet. As a matter of fact, he transgressed against God. And when he did, he lost his authority. And, and he was actually kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So in the New Testament, there's a lot that I could teach on that Old Testament and all that. Let's just trans, you know, fast forward to the New Testament. In the New Testament, we are given, you and I, born again believers, are given the assignment to succeed where Adam failed. God has once again made us both kings and priests in the earth. That's Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. We are kings and priests in this world, in the earth. So God still requires us to extend his kingdom influence on this planet. Now, if you read the end of the book, I, I like to read uh, sometimes the book of Revelation. So the revelation of Jesus Christ that John wrote, uh, given through Jesus Christ himself, the apostle John documented it. Uh, if you read Revelations 11 and verse 15, then you'll see that towards the end of the book, the Bible says that, you know, uh, when the seventh trumpet, I believe, is sounded, then uh, there came this declaration from heaven that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. So the goal is for the kingdoms of this world to, be king, to become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, for God's kingdom influence to extend all over the planet. That is going to happen. But really for it to happen, it has to happen through us because we are the emissaries of change. We are God's ambassadors. We are ambassadors from heaven in this world. This is where prayer comes in. We cannot invoke or extend God's kingdom influence on this planet without God. So we need God, right? On a daily basis, we need God to do what we cannot do. God gives us the grace to do things down here in this world and where we can't, God can. So we need him to kick in where we can't. And how do we get him involved? That's where prayer comes in. See, a lot of times God won't even move in our lives. The Bible says that we have not because we ask not. Jesus said, look, before you even pray, the father knows what you need but then you still need to pray, right? So a lot of times God won't do anything. God won't initiate, God won't move until we invite him, until we invoke him. And the activation of this invocation comes through the vehicle of prayer. So we invoke his involvement. We invoke heaven's influence on this planet through the vehicle of prayer. So what does this mean to you today? Because I'm trying to lay a foundation for prayer. I have six things to share with you on this morning. I, I, I told you that I like to teach uh, you know, foundational up front. And then yesterday I just gave you this, this example, man, of Jesus and Moses and Elijah praying. That was amazing. I, I, I trust that you enjoyed yesterday's message. Let me go back to some foundational truths here. You ready? I have six things to share with you this morning about prayer. Here we go. Number one, heaven still wants to invade the earth, right? So that's the goal. Heaven wants to invade the earth. This happens through us, through humans, right? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen through us. And it happens when humans pray for God's kingdom to come, and for his will to be done, where? On earth. How? As it is in heaven. That's how Jesus taught us to pray. So when we pray, we're, we're invoking heaven's influence on this planet. Number two, God's initial goal, and actually it's still his ultimate goal, is for the earth to look like heaven. So God is likened to a king, and this planet is supposed to be like a colony of his kingdom. And a colony takes on the culture of the mother kingdom. So whenever you see something in your life that's not lining up with heaven, 
then Jesus said, then pray for God's kingdom because his kingdom has come. Pray for his will to be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. So you're praying as it is in heaven on the earth. You're praying heaven down. So whenever you see something in your life, in your marriage, with your children, in your finances, on your job, that doesn't look like heaven, you're supposed to invoke heaven's influence in that situation, in that meeting, in that conversation, on that project. You know, you're, over, you're overseeing a program. Invoke heaven's influence. How do you do it? Through the vehicle of prayer. Number three, there are a lot of biblical principles here, but I can't get, just give you all the scriptures. But, you know, I, I, I'll take my time as I go through this series. But here's one of the concepts. God rules the heavens and the earth has he given to man. He's given that to us. And there's many scriptures for that. So God is ruling ultimately the heavens and he expects us to rule the earth. Now, while God is God and I would never, I mean, who am I? I shudder to think that I could ever tell God what to do. So God is God. He could do whatever he wants. But what the Bible teaches and what I've experienced and, you know, what we see through the Holy Spirit is that God has chosen to honor the system that he created. And in the system that he created, God expects man to rule this planet where he ultimately rules the kingdoms, the heavens, right? And so what he's looking for is for us to invoke heaven's influence on this planet. He's ruling up here. We're supposed to rule down here. And then we can't do it without him. So we're supposed to invoke his involvement and we ask him to get involved and we invoke him to get involved and we do it through the vehicle of prayer. So heaven comes down and heaven's influence can be seen on this planet when humans invoke it, initiate it, uh, initiate it, invite him through the vehicle of prayer. So the method for this invocation we see in the Bible is prayer. Number four, Jesus was an example of what it looks like when a man like us walks around filled with God, with God on the inside, and invokes heaven's influence on the planet. Jesus brought heaven down to the earth daily while he was here. He walked into a situation and then, oh, you're blind. You can't see. Well, in heaven, there's nobody that's blind. So if you can't see and I look up to heaven, I don't see anybody blind in heaven. So he brought down sight from heaven, manifested it in the earth. Oh, you can't walk in heaven. There's nobody that's lame. <laughs> so, so I'm looking up to heaven. I see people walking around. You can't walk. He brought down from heaven down to the earth walking, right? And so they would stand up. The power of God was released. Jesus brought both worlds together. Jesus brought heaven down to the earth. Well, watch this. Jesus is no longer here. He left us in his place and we are supposed to do the same. We are supposed to bring both worlds together. This is heaven. This is the earth. We are the agents that bring both worlds together. We're supposed to do this and we do this through the vehicle of prayer. Number five. Look at me for a minute. I'm going to teach. Obviously, I'll be teaching on prayer for a little while here. But but one of the the hardest thing I, th I think it is for for me anyway, because I was not kingdom minded when I was born again, because in this world, in the United States anyway, we have a president. <laughs> and whether you like the current president or not, we have a president. And then the president uh, doesn't have ultimate authority. You know, there are checks and balances. And um, and so the president can be checked. Well, a king cannot be checked. And so a king has ultimate authority and God is likened to a king, not a president or prime minister. So you got to think kingdom. You got to think kingdom. And then you got to think kingdom even over church. Far too many Christians are comfortable living church minded instead of kingdom minded. They, they go to church twice a week. You know, they serve, you know, as a greeter, as an usher on the praise team. That's cool. They give an offering and then they go about their merry way. And then week after week, that's all they do. And and God is compartmentalized in their lives and they, they limit God to Sundays and Wednesdays. And, and that's kind of the, and, and you know, they have a great relationship with God. Hallelujah. But that's not kingdom. That's church. Jesus didn't come to establish a church. He came to establish a kingdom. Jesus expects the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our Lord. Jesus expects us to expand, to encroach. The, the kingdom of God is supposed to be expanding. We're supposed to move forward. The, the kingdom of God suffers violence. The Bible says in the violent, take it by force. By force. We're supposed to reach the world for Jesus. We're supposed to expand God's kingdom influence on this planet. And to do this, we need God. And to get God involved, we need to pray. 
Prayer is, is the agent, is the vehicle, is the, uh, is the method through which we invoke God's involvement in everything that we do. And then number six, and finally, God has given us the grace to affect with effects and influence the people of this world and the systems of this world. Let's say that you work in the education system. God can bless you to affect the people in the education system, but he can also bless you to affect the whole education system. Let's say that you're in the, the, the military system, the Department of Defense. God can bless you to, to affect the, the people that are in the Department of Defense, but then he can raise you up to affect the whole department. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying God has sent us to affect the people of this world and the systems of this world. We're supposed to affect with effects and influence everything that we do. Is heaven is supposed to come down to the earth. That's how you think kingdom minded. For that to happen though, we need God. And for us to get him involved, we need to pray. Prayer is what activates all of this thing, what I'm, what I'm talking about today, to happen in our lives. We must pray. Prayer is how we bring heaven down. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I obviously have a lot more to say about this, but I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I expect your involvement in my life in 2018 like never before. I have this expectation because I am determined to pray like never before. I invoke your presence and your power on a daily basis. I invite you, Father, to get involved in every area of my life. I declare that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of my Lord and of his Christ because it will happen through me. I am an agent of change. I bring heaven down to the earth daily. I bring both worlds together. I unleash the supernatural into the natural. And I do this through prayer. Your kingdom has come. Your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven through me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Share this message with somebody before you leave the screen. And as you walk into this day, do so kingdom minded, determined to bring heaven into every meeting, every conversation, and all the activity that you engage in today. God bless you.